Yeah. Good to meet you, Steve, is it? Yeah, good to meet you, eh? Yeah. Yeah. We're just waiting for one more fella coming up from Thornton Bridge. Um, what we're going to do today is go out through Long Swamp, Gardner's Gap, cross through uh, Wattle Mount Track. There's a, there's a few washouts here where you'll flex up a bit. Um, yeah, then the we're winch. going out through Sunny Corner, for the winch. Dark Corner, <laughs> and Palmer's Oki. And we're going to follow the Turon River along. And um, if it gets too hot, we might have to stop for a swim somewhere. Um, Just saying you're going to be the odd one out when we're all skinny dipping, aren't you? <laughs> and then, then, we're, <laughs> then, <laughs> then, we're, then we're heading up to the, then we're heading up the hill end and um, we'll see how we're going for time. It, we'll, we're going to go and have dinner at the pub, so we're booked in for the campground in the village. Tomorrow, depending on the bushfires, there's bushfires out there at the moment, uh, we're going to head down the bridle track, have a look at some mine sites, maybe have another swim at uh, Mary Flynn Hole, campground, and um, have a look at another mine. You walk into the mine from the shaft, and um, then we'll head up Roof Hog and back to Bathurst. Once we got off the tar, it was time to air down. I use a drifter indeflate to air down. This allows me to air down two tires at the same time and in the meantime film and see what the other guys are doing. So all these came down from the mine subsidence underneath. Um, ben Bullen range, and they come out beyond, come out up further. Yeah, uh, what do you call it? Out beyond Cullen Bullen there, and by like that hill that the sun's on right over there, that's that's um, oh, that's out towards between like Caperdy and and Sunny Corner, <laughs> out beyond Portland there. Yeah. This is by no way meant as a hardcore trip as we have a few vehicles without any lockers and a variation of driver experience. However, Rob scouted uh, quite a few nice little obstacles which could be tackled by most vehicles. This little warm-up section was along the power lines with a reasonably steep descent and an off-camper section. Next we had a section of wombat holes which showed off nicely the articulation between the different leaf sprung vehicles. see the difference here of the coil sprung cruiser with the long travel suspension. 
there's far less movement in the body and it just glides over the wombat holes. out of the creek had a little bit of a rocky section which some of the unlocked vehicles and with less uh, suspension travel needed a second attempt. Jackass Hill, or also called Bastard Hill, it's probably one of the hardest tracks in the sunny corner. Only Bill and myself were interested in driving it this time. It is a fairly steep track at places and has some moderate rock steps and shady loose rocks. So it definitely is an interesting drive and you need to pick your lines a little bit and have good throttle control. Going back down again, it shows quite nicely how steep of a decline the hill really is. After Bastard Hill, it was time for lunch. I thought we have a barbie or something, you know? Fire then. Oh. My titanium cutlery. Our next destination was Sofala, a small little town next to the Turon River. Sofala came to life as a direct result of the gold rush, which had been spurred on when Edward Hargraves discovered gold at Summerhill Creek on the 12th of February 1851. By June of that year, thousands of people had set up mining operations in the valley, and both the Royal Hotel and the General Store were built in 1851 to handle the increased demand. Initially, gold was found in the area known as Gold Point on the Turon River. When the alluvial gold ran out, mining turned to quartz reef mining. The town was a center of opposition to the gold licensing system in New South Wales at the time. A considerable proportion of the miners were Chinese. Supposedly, Sofala is the oldest surviving gold rush town in Australia. There are still gold prospectors who pass the time using metal detectors, gold pans and sluice boxes to recover small quantities of gold dust. We're just going to have a swim and cool off and then we'll get back up the hill in. As it was a pretty hot day, we decided to go for a swim in the local Sofala swimming hall. I'm Dave Coventry, this is my 82 HJ47 Trivi, um, one of the loves of my life. It's got running a 2H turbo, um, 5 speed, disc brake front, 
twin locked with um, eight knee lockers, two and a half inch lift, and um, yep, it's my daily driver, but I also go out and have a good time and have a play with it. So. Our next stop and also the camp spot for the night was Hillend, another old gold mining town with a very interesting past. We decided to stay at the local village campground and have dinner at the pub to support the local community. In 1872, Bernard Holtermann unearthed a 630-pound rock containing more than 75% gold from Hilland. Oh. The rules here. Small towns like Hilland can't survive without tourism. Right. So we always make an effort to stay in these little towns or at least have a stop and have something to eat, have something to drink to support the local community. Robert. Hello. Here we are. Sunny here. Beautiful. Oh, you're the whole set. It's not the end of the year, but you can see it from here. Yes. Hill and owes its existence to the New South Wales gold rush of the 1850s. At its peak in the early 1870s, it had a population estimated at 8,000 people, served by two newspapers, five banks, eight churches and 28 pubs. You heard correctly, 28 pubs. The town's decline when the gold gave out was dramatic. By 1945 the population was 700. At the 2006 census Hill End had a population of 166, which has now dropped to 80 people during the year 2017. Hill End is classified as a historical site by the National Parks and Wildlife Services. However, it is still home to a handful of residents operating the local pub, general store, cake store and an antique store. National Parks runs a museum just off the main road which contains many original photos and items of equipment from the busy days of the gold rush. Hill End is also the end of the bridal track which we will be driving tomorrow. This is the end of the first episode. In part two you will see what we find dead in this cave. We will be looking for gold in some old mine shafts. Do a bit more technical four wheel driving and recover one of the troopies. I hope you enjoyed the video. As always it would be greatly appreciated if you subscribe to my channel, like the video and please leave me a comment in the comment section.